Number five. Slightly more difficult, but it's still okay. Here we go. Right here it says that we have a right circular cylinder, just like a regular single cylinder. And the base is a circle. And it says it's inscribed, meaning that you are gonna put you are gonna form a cylinder inside of a sphere. So inscribed in a sphere, which is like a basketball. And the sphere has a radius of four. And we are gonna find the biggest possible volume of such a cylinder. So here, let me give you guys a picture. This is what we know. We have a sphere like this. Boom, it's a pretty much a circle. And to draw a sphere, you do this, this, and then that, all right? And it says the sphere has the radius four. So this right here is four. Now, we want to just kind of construct a cylinder inside. So you can put a cylinder like this. You just make a horizontal cut and then like a vertical cut. And then somehow you make a cylinder like this. And you can imagine if you make the cylinder like this, they will have different volumes. So let's just take a look at the blue one and try to see what we can possibly do with this. All right, I will have to remind you guys that. So let me just remind you, note. When we have a volume of a cylinder, when it's a circular cylinder, this right here is pi r square h, all right? And the cylinder is the circular cylinder like that. So one of the formulas that you should definitely remember for uh, automation also related rates. But let me just write this. Okay, so uh, based on this, what do we know though? That's it, huh? And what do we want to know? Well, we do want to know the volume of the cylinder and we want it to be the smaller, we want to be the biggest possible. So we want the maximum of the volume of the blue cylinder. So how can we do it? Well, it looks like we need to have the R. We don't have the R yet and we don't have the H yet. But don't worry, this is how we do the math. Here, let's take a look at the sphere. If you just look at it from one side, then that's called the cross section, which is just going to be a circle. And then if you put the X and Y axis, like we usually do when we do calculus and even physics, we will put a X1 axis. So let's say this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. All right. Now, what does this do? In fact, this right here, will turn the question like what we did earlier. Yeah, do you see it? This picture and this picture. Here, we also need to know the equation of the circle. And the equation of the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Our center is at zero, zero, so we just have x squared plus y squared equals R, which is 4 and we square that. So that's the equation of the circle. Now we want the radius that we talked about earlier. From here to here is the radius of the cylinder. I don't know what that is. I'll call that x. And from here to here it will be the height of the cylinder, but not really, it's technically the y because I'm putting down the x or y plane like that, right? So here's the deal. Based on our labeling, our volume of the blue cylinder is pi and then the radius is x. So I will just multiply by x and we square that because that's the radius squared and we want the whole height, right? Remember the height, it's from here to here. It's 2y by symmetry. On the top is y, the bottom will also be y. So the whole thing is 2y. So multiply by 2y. 
All right, so that's that. The trick is you will have to look at this as a cross section and also recall the equation of a circle. Now, same thing. Here we have the y, so perhaps let's go up here and uh, minus x squared on both sides. So we get y squared is equal to 4 squared, which is 16, and then minus x squared. And then just take the positive square root. So y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. Because based on our picture, we just want the y to be on the top right here. And if you have a negative, you will end up with a negative volume. So just positive square root is OK. And then we'll put this right here. That will give us the volume in terms of just x. And let me write down the 2 first. So we will have 2 pi and then x squared. And then for the y, which is that square root. Right? Square root of 16 minus x squared. And unfortunately, we cannot really do any algebra to simplify this expression. So we'll just have to do calculus now. And we will have to use the product rule. So go ahead. I will look at this as the first function. So we will have 2 pi x squared times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is, well, the square root is, we will have the over 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. And don't forget the chain rule. So multiply by negative 2x. And then we are going to add the second function, which is the square root, 16 minus x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the first. For that, we just have to do the power rule for this. Bring the 2 to the front, we get 4 pi, and then x to the first power. That's that. And then perhaps we can clean things up a little bit. 2 and 2 cancel. Eh, that's about all. And then I'm just going to rewrite this. This is again our first derivative. So x squared times x, we have x to a third power. And that's a negative here. So we have negative 2 pi x to the third power over square root of 16 minus x squared. And then for the other part, let's write it as plus 4 pi x times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Let's get the common denominator, multiply the top and bottom by square root of 16 minus x squared. So that means we get both of them being dividing square root of 16 minus x squared. And for the first part, we have negative 2 pi x to the third power. And then we see that this and that multiplying, we will just get 16 minus x squared. And then take this, distribute. So 4 times 16, we get plus 64, and then the pi x. And then 4 pi x times that is minus 4 pi x to the third power. And we have two more things that we can do, right? Combine this and that to this, these two things. So we get negative 6 pi x to the third power plus 64 pi x over square root of 16 minus x squared. Whew, a lot, huh? And now go ahead and set this to be 0. And in fact, you don't need to worry about the critical number when the derivative is not defined, because that's the case when x is equal to 4. Because when you plug in 4 into the volume equation, you get 0 for the volume. So you don't really have to worry about that. That being said, just worry about where the derivative is equal to 0, which is just the top being equal to 0. So we look at negative 6 pi x to the third power plus 64 pi x being equal to 0. To solve this equation, let's go ahead and factor out negative 2 pi x. So we will get 3x squared minus 64 divided by 2 is 32, and the pi x are out already. And we have critical numbers. When this is equal to 0, that means x is equal to 0, but we don't care about this, seriously, because that will give us 0 for the volume. 
and we care about 3x minus 32 is equal to 0, which is 3x squared equals 32. And then we can divide both sides by 3, take the square root, so we get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 32 over 3. And of course, we are just going to get rid of the negative. And now, yeah, of course, you know, this is going to give us the answer, but I will still provide a quick verification. The derivative at square root of 32 over 3, and notice I didn't simplify this, because you guys will see why. The derivative is 0, and I will just do the first derivative test, because I don't want to take the derivative that again. All right, I will just show you like this. The derivative at here is 0. And if you put a number less than this into the derivative, I will tell you, you will get past the derivative right before it. And if you put a number slightly bigger than this into the derivative, you will get negative. So as we can see, v prime changes from positive to negative at x equals square root of 32 over 3. So there is a maximum. And this is called the first derivative test. And yeah, I think that should be okay. Now, we are going to answer the question, and it's only asking us to get the largest possible volume. So I don't need to give the dimension. I will just plug in the critical number, which is this right here, into our volume equation. So as we can see, we will get volume of square root of 32 over 3. That is just 2 pi times x squared, which is you know, the square root and the square will cancel each other out very nicely. That's why I didn't simplify. But anyway, square root 16 minus x, right, which is 32 over 3 square. And now let's just go ahead and do the work. So this right here is equal to 2 times pi times square root and the square cancel, so 32 over 3 times. Okay, for the inside here, Go ahead and just work it out on your own. It's just 16 minus 32 over 3, which is 48 over 3, minus 32 over 3, which we get 16 over 3. And uh, that will be 2 pi times 32 over 3 times 4 over square root of 3. So all in all, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times that is 200. 56 pi over 3 square root of 3. And this right here will be the answer.